A new article in the Arkansas Democrat Gazette contains some new information and very interesting information about a case we've covered already in Sharp County. A case involving police brutality from a number of officers there, some of which have a very shady past already, not counting this incident. Of course, there's a different level and standard of justice that applies to the police than would apply to the normal citizenry, not just in Arkansas, but in another a number of states, perhaps all of the United States, or at least a great portion of it. But here in the South, and here in Arkansas specifically, when police make mistakes, there's not generally an admission of that. Usually what actually happens is the person who the mistake involved gets charged with crimes, not necessarily the ones that they committed. Do you remember the case of Walnut Ridge with Adam Finley, the one who was uh, roughed up by a, a stupid cop that then kept his job while Adam Finley was written citations? <laughs> but we know better because we saw the video and we know that those citations were bogus. The citations in that case were pursued all the way to trial. In this case, they won't be. And... I'm hopeful that that may be because Prosecutor Henry Boyce is learning that this type of crap is over and will not continue in Northeast Arkansas because there's going to be at least one news reporter here that's voice is quite big that's going to speak up about it. I'll let you guess who that may be. Third Judicial District Prosecutor Henry Boyce specifically himself made a quote about this case that we're talking about now involving Randall Lee Vesey, 41, who had his face destroyed by the unmerciful police officers that participated in his arrest. Merciless. And not one of them stood up to do the right thing. Not one of them stopped the other officer from beating him in the face with a flashlight, according to the lawsuit filed in Sharp County Circuit Court. We're going to talk about that lawsuit more here in just a second. But I want to go to the headline tonight. Because Henry Boyce, who generally sides with police, just to be frank, he sided with them in Walnut Ridge, and we all know how that went. Well, he said this time something a little different. He said he wanted to dismiss the charges against VZ. Because according to him, no police officers were injured, so there was certainly some misconduct. O-M-G. We don't hear that word from Henry Boyce about the police ever. We didn't hear it from Henry Boyce when he defended Ryan Cooper for Cooper's stupid prosecution of Adam Finley in Walnut Ridge. A man should not be prosecuted because a cop made mistakes. That was Walnut Ridge. This is that case to another degree. Because in this instance, a man almost lost his life. And how did authorities take responsibility for that? They charged him so that he couldn't pursue legal action, but it didn't work out that way. A couple of the attorneys that are representing the man have filed a civil rights lawsuit. This is on NEA Report, this article. I posted it on May 17th, if you want to go back and look at the archives. James W. Harris, Zachary W. Morrison of Blyville are both representing Mr. Vesey. On November 12th, 2016, law enforcement responded to a call at his residence in Ash Flat. They found him intoxicated. Being drunk is what he was guilty of, if you want to call it that, right? Here's where it went. He was placed in handcuffs, and then, according to this lawsuit, Officer Josh Trivett body slammed him to the floor, exclaiming at the same time, I body slammed the mother effer. But he said the full word. I have him on camera saying those words. The body camera footage shows Officer Tom Rigsby standing over VZ while he's on the ground handcuffed. The video shows Rigsby yelling at him, he, he kept telling him, shut up, quit talking. It was country cop on steroids, maybe literally. Because after he tells him to shut up in this just drawl of a voice, you see the officer cover or at least aim the camera up a little bit that's recording. And then the lawsuit says Rigsby struck the victim in the head with his mag light, flashlight. He struck him in the head with a steel flashlight. 
you can hear the strikes in the video. You, bro. Yeah, bro. I'm trying to get the blood out of my mouth, bro. You did not Come listen. On, man. You got charged. No, you don't listen because. Listen to me. Shut the fuck up. Come on, man. I got blood. Yes, because you wouldn't listen to shut up. No, you wouldn't tell me what I was arrested. Hey, we don't have a mask, do we? Come on, man. Really? A mask? Yeah, because you won't shut the fuck up and spit. Come on, man. You've done this to me. I didn't do shit to you. You did it to yourself. You better look at who you're talking to. It's not me. Come on, man. I blame you for nothing. Hey, hey, hey. If you'll shut up, we'll get you something. Hey, if you'll shut up. Get him back in the car. All right? Shut up, man. Look, Yeah, well, you don't spit on people either. I didn't spit on them. The hell you didn't. Fuck, he's bleeding bad. It's all fun and games to the police there. Is he, is he calling your names now? Is that illegal, officer? Are you not allowed to be called names? I'm sure they're probably thinking of another reason to smash the guy's skull in with the mag light right around here. However, aside from the officers blaming the man being beaten on the man himself, victim blaming at its worst, the officers are quite obviously jovial and continue to uh, speak about the man even after the incident goes on. Here in a moment, they're going to get the man in the... Uh, in the car. Now the, the body camera here on, on this likely round officer is aimed up at the sky, but I want you to listen. That's a question we have too, officer. I want you to listen to what the officer says when he's in the vehicle by himself about this victim. Slam this fucking ass. Did you hear that? He said that he slammed his effing ass. And it's interesting to me because that's not behavior that one would expect of a sworn law enforcement officer. Somebody that cares about justice does not behave the way that we just saw. Somebody that cares about what's right and wrong does not do what we just witnessed on this body camera footage. Uh, but what we just witnessed is not someone that cares about right and wrong. What we witnessed were officers brutally beating a man who was mouthing off to them and these local thugs that were wearing badges felt that they were so above the law they should never be questioned. Notice the officer covering up his body camera as the other officer, portly piggy there, bends down and beats the guy in the head. I mean, do you think this is okay, folks? Do you think it's cool? Is it all cool because they post some dancing videos online? Give me a break. We're going to have to stop saying back groups, whether it's the blue or people that don't like police, whether it's Democrats or Republicans. We need to start looking at individuals in all walks of life. And in this case, you got an entire group, a throng of individuals that are participating in police brutality on camera. Now we've got the prosecutor, in essence, admitting to police conduct. Huh. So when is something going to be done? When are people going to be fired? When will there be actual justice? When can the county trust that Officer Josh Trivet is not still on the force, which he is? He shouldn't be. He should be terminated. When can the police, you know, the government employees with guns, when can they be trusted in Sharp County? Because it's not tonight. This is police brutality that we witnessed. There's a lawsuit over this, and we know now, based on the words from Prosecutor Henry Boyce in this exact newspaper article, that there was certainly some misconduct. That is a quote. I reached out to Henry Boyce for comment. No surprise he did not answer. He's probably not too particularly happy with NEA report. The fact that we've been reporting on... Well, the things that he's not quite been able to get done in his job duties. Because if justice is on the prosecutor, 
as is the case here, then where are you, Henry? Dropping charges against a guy that had the crap beat out of him is not enough. Bring charges against the police officers. If you don't think there's enough evidence, well, there sure as hell wasn't enough evidence against VZ in this case, but you still went forward with it up until now. By the way, they had to actually drop the charges twice because the first time they did it, eh, apparently the judge didn't get it entered in, right? <laughs> I mean, this stuff is not going to end, folks. It's never going to end. It will never end until we can stop pretending it's not there. There is a serious problem going on with our criminal justice system in America. And I love the good work that police do. I do. And I have friends that are police officers, but they're not thrilled with me right now. Um, because for some reason, all officers seem to be apprehensive slash hostile whenever a journalist or an outside entity begins calling question to them. Not all, 98%, but pretty much all. And that's unfortunate because it would say a lot more about police if we saw them speaking up about stuff like this instead of staying quiet and the ones on camera that weren't involved turning their body cameras away as they turn their bodies away, as they quit looking for crime at least until their buddies were done committing it. Now an NEA Report update to a story we first brought you here on NEA Report, of course, before the other news outlets in town took a stab at it too. The story about Ziggy, the dog that was taken to the PetSmart in Jonesboro just a few short days ago, but emerged completely different than the baby went in. The dog went in for a haircut and came out with a terrible wound on his back, but the update we have tonight is that Ziggy is back home and in one piece again. Of course, you can see right there the scar on that poor small dog's back, 10 months old, and the sweet little dog uh, that belongs to Caitlin Weatherford, who took these photos and passed them along, uh, was uh, injured in what a store manager told the dog owner was a Great Dane that attacked the dog, but we've not seen security footage of it, and a lot of people on social media have big questions, in Weatherford being one of them, about if it was indeed a Great Dane or if it was some other type of accident. Nonetheless, what we know is that the accident was due to PetSmart's negligence and the fact that the job wasn't done correctly at the local store. Because when you ask for your dog to get a haircut, it shouldn't have a giant 7-inch strip torn out of its back. We're glad Ziggy's back home tonight. But we're not leaving this story alone, and we look forward to PetSmart's corporate offices completing their investigation that they said would be underway in the next several days after a corporate leader is planned to join the Jonesboro store's current investigation. How long does it take to investigate security camera footage? Well, apparently three days or more. If you're looking for a bite to eat, this photo may not be one that would assist or at least motivate your appetite very much unless you're trying to lose a little bit of weight because there's not many people who would want to eat anything off of a table covered in bird poop. You're looking at an actual table at the Mall at Turtle Creek that is covered in bird droppings. And apparently it's not the only one. This is all from a... Well, a social media post made by Jackie Wallace, who said, if you're hungry, stop into the mall at Turtle Creek, but those white spots you see are bird droppings. Disgusting. She also said that it's not just at this table, but actually over the past several days, four days, she's hosted two meetings at the food court, and the same mess appears to exist on multiple tables that was not cleaned. Poop on a food court table. I wonder why the mall at Turtle Creek is empty. Let's take a look now at your new wave wireless forecast. Home with a $49 iPhone screen prepare. Repair. See if I can get the word out right. Uh, 72 for the overnight low tonight. It's 90 degrees for your high tomorrow. Sunny skies. That's the story for Thursday too. Showers on the way. Possible Friday, but unlikely. However, much more likely as we roll into Saturday and Sunday. 20% uh, chance Friday. 40 on Saturday. 50 on Sunday. Don't make plans this weekend unless you're planning on getting rained on. 
but that's kind of fun sometimes too. It's 77 degrees in Jonesboro right now. Family Medical Clinic of Walnut Ridge and Bono are your neighborhood health care providers, and we're now accepting new patients. We know you have a tight schedule, so we're here six days a week at both locations from 6 a.m. to 7 p.m. Walk-ins are welcome. In Walnut Ridge, stop by 1045 West Main Street or call us to make an appointment, 886-8300. In Bono, we're on Highway 63 North or call 930-9990. Walnut Ridge Family Medical Clinic and Bono Family Medical Clinic, here for you when you need us. Haley Norris, Realtor. No. Should I make my hair go like this? Whether you need to buy, sell, or lease. Haley, can I use my hands? Or is yeah. that, where, where are my hands? Where do they go? Just Haley. Say, Haley. Just say Haley. <laughs> Whether, <laughs> you need my expertise. Haley Norris, Realtor. Or even do a commercial lease. Haley Norris, Realtor. Do, should I say Remax Real Estate Center or not? Is that too salesy? No, that's good. My average days on market, is just 50 days. You need my expertise. And that means I'm putting more money back in your pocket. Well, you guys are so cool. I'm just sitting here reading chat, and uh, the messages are all like, it's all I can do not to read the chat and tear up some days because of how neat the audience is. So I want to thank you all for the support. Uh, this may sound strange, but we're in a time where journalists are not necessarily appreciated always, and uh, I'm not going to get into why, but I will tell you that we're human beings, and we, we really do appreciate it whenever folks um, say nice things to us. I guess anybody would, um, but for some reason, <laughs> folks think just because that uh, uh, you know that I do a little show online that, that I'm not a real person with feelings sometimes, and um, gosh, I really appreciate that. So I want to thank you to Sherry, Peggy, Corey, Courtney. Uh, Let's see. Did I say Sherry already? We'll say it again. Uh, and um, uh, Tequila and Amaret and Rebecca and Sabrina and Kathy and so many more of you who said something today. I want to thank all of you uh, for the kind words. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right. So let me talk uh, now and tell you one last thing here before we head out the door on NEA report. We uh, want to let you know that Commerce Overpass is uh, briefly going to be reduced to one lane. That's starting tomorrow morning at 830. It's Commerce Drive Bridge over I-555. A lot of y'all are going to be driving through there and I just want you to be you know, aware and, and kind of have a heads up. Uh, workers are going to be resurfacing the bridge as well as replacing guard rails so there's going to be a temporary traffic signal signs and those kind of work drums uh, that are going to be placed around too but if you're driving on I-555 tomorrow I just want you guys to know that uh, Commerce Drive Bridge going to be uh, it says Commerce Drive Bridge over I-555 going to be reduced to one lane of traffic so it really has nothing to do with I-555 it's just over it but that's how I said it all right uh, it's 1019 thanks everybody for joining us tonight thank you Melissa thank you Michelle and again uh, to I think that's another Rebecca so thank you again Rebecca Rebecca Lynn and Colt too thank you all for uh, sending out the kind words and chat tonight thank you for joining us on NEA report this evening it's always appreciated give you one final look at that forecast before we head out the door uh, as it's about 72 degrees right now we're expecting temperatures uh, tonight to well not really get any cooler be around the same and tomorrow expect those temperatures oops sorry a little loud expect those temperatures tomorrow to be up to around 90 sunny skies rainfall on the way possible Friday much more likely into Saturday, so just make your plans accordingly. Thanks for joining us. I'm Stan Morris, and you're up to date on NEA Report.